just a, a couple of housekeeping things um, I do want to mention at the top of the session is that this is set a session which is part of the Decentralized Identity Foundation Hackathon 2024. We are recording it today. We're going to make it available in the Hackathon Discord in the recordings channel. Also, it will be uploaded loaded to YouTube. We'll have a complete list of all the sessions there for anyone um, who wants to go back and review this challenge. Um, also, um, quick reminder is that in order to officially be entered into this hackathon, you do have to register on DevPost. We are using DevPost for registration, also submission, distribution of prize money. So unless you're registered there, you will not officially be entered into the hackathon. Um, also, I dropped the hackathon Discord server. So Pinata does have a channel dedicated to them where you can go in and ask questions um, and they'll um, give you all the info you need. And then um, we have an info site. We have, we do have, uh, we have 15 sponsors. It's not humanly possible to fit that all on dev posts. We created a special place for every single little detail, prize, uh, money amount, inspirational, this or that um, in one place. So that's the hackathon, diff hackathon info site. So that's there as well. So I'd like to introduce Steve Simpkins, who is head of developer relations at Pinata, and he'll be going through file-based identity solutions at Pinata. So thank you, uh, Steve, for being here today and go ahead and take it away. Awesome. Yeah, thank you for that introduction, Lamari. Um, yep, so I'm really excited to do our presentation today on verifiable file uploads, made simple, show you guys a few things about how Pinata works, some of our prizes and how you can do everything. So uh, let's see here. So yeah, my name is Steve. I'm the head of developer relations for Pinata. Uh, you can find me pretty much anywhere by my handle, Steve Dylan Dev. And yeah, I do a lot of things at Pinata, primarily doing with developer experience and making sure that developers are using Pinata are happy that things work the way they expect and that things are flowing smoothly. Um, that could be in the form of support. Also it takes the form of making content, documentation, and just showing people how Pinata works. Um, so I love doing that and I love building apps. I love using developer tools and showing people how to use developer tools and even building those tools myself. And so that is what I'm really passionate about and I love doing. So kind of in like the right spot right now. I love it. And uh, yeah, uh, one of the things that we uh, do when someone joins Pinata is we ask them, you know, if uh, you had a any kind of feeling you could have for a pinata, what would it be? Mine is coffee beans. So that's my little personality trait right there. <laughs> so what is pinata? Uh, pinata is the biggest IPFS storage provider. If you're not familiar with IPFS, it's pretty big in Web3, but it's the um, interplanetary uh, file system. And it basically is a way for people to share files where there's not necessarily one central entity that has access to the files or control over the files. And pinata is a way to have access to that protocol at a very large scale and making it really easy to get your files up on IPFS and to retrieve them. And we've been doing that since 2018. We've been building file storage infrastructure since 2018. And in that time, we've served over 600,000 developers. Um, and, you know, more recently, we've been kind of developing even more tools to help developers, including our files API, which is the ability to have private files and grant access to that content based on, you know, any kind of authentication mechanism you want to build in. And uh, we're kind of building in things that we learned from the Web3 space, such as like our CDN makes content very fast and accessible no matter where you are on the globe, um, as well as some other nice features like key value data stores, making it possible for you to build apps without having to spin up a database and store information related to your files. And so, a lot of cool stuff. We can kind of talk a little bit about that later. And so maybe the big question is, you know, why use Pinata? And there's several different reasons. Uh, one of them is that everything that you upload is content addressable. What that means is when you upload a file, it's going to go through our system or API, and it's going to give it a special unique ID or a hash. And you can see here in this little slide here, we have the CID and it's this long string of text. And that is kind of like a unique fingerprint to the file. Um, if you uploaded that file a second time or a third time, you're always going to get the same ID or the same CID. 
what is called content identifier. And that basically ensures that the content has not been tampered with, or it is what it says it is. That makes sense. So if you're working with files in a public sector, like health files or mortgages or all sorts of really important things that you have to make sure have integrity and have not been altered in any kind of way and just verify that the file is what it says it is. This is a really great use case for that. And it also prevents you having to do duplicate uploads because once you've uploaded a file, if you upload again, it's the same CID, we could just skip it and it'll be you know already there in your account, which is really cool. Other things that our files API does that you may reasons you may want to use Pinata is the ability to do public or private files. Um, all files that you upload by default are going to be private, but making the file public is also really easy. You can simply create a group that is public. And once you start adding files to that group, they'll be publicly accessible. And we'll show you that in the demo in just a little bit. And of course, another great reason to use Pinata is for IPFS capabilities. So if you wanted to access IPFS and use the IPFS network, uh, we have a separate SDK, which is Pinata-Web3, uses almost all the exact same methods and code. So it's very similar to the files API, but the only difference is when you use IPFS, everything is gonna be on a public accessible network, which we'll also show in just a little bit. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and go into a live demo. I'm gonna show you a little bit of how to use Pinata account, how to write some code to upload files and integrate it into your application. So let's see here. First, I'm going to go over to the Pinata app. So this is app.pinata.cloud. You can create an account and register for free. Pretty much all of the features that we'll be going over today are going to be available for free. So you won't really need a paid account to participate in the hackathon or use Pinata or uh, participate for any of these challenges, which is really nice. Um, once you're in the account, you know, you have like a view where you can manage your files. But more importantly, is the ability to set up your API keys and your gateway. So if we click on this API keys, tab here. You can see here where we can make an API key. And it's as simple as putting up DIF, put a name for your API key. We can give it admin access and just hit generate API key. That's going to give you uh, three different keys that you can copy down. The most important one is this really big one that's called the JWT. And that's just kind of like an all-in-one API key that you can use. So when you're going through this, be sure to create that key, save it somewhere safe, and we'll use it in just a little bit. The other thing you're going to need is your gateway. When you create an account, the gateway is already there by default. So you can just go to the gateways tab here. And you can see here you have a domain here. Mine is Aqua Accessible Goldfish 773. You just copy that domain as it is, put it along with your API key. Uh, this is publicly accessible, so this is not uh, sensitive information like the API key that needs to be kept secret. Uh, so just copy this down, but keep it in the same place just so you don't lose it. Um, and that's all you have to do to get set up on the Pinata app. And then it's just a matter of writing the code. So let's get into that. I'm going to be doing a little demo through uh, this site called val.town. It's a great little place to sketch out some code, run some examples and things like that. I've already got my Pinata API key set up here, so I don't have to do any kind of um, .env file. But generally, when you're building an app, you may want to use something like that to keep it secure. And let's go ahead and start putting in some code. We're going to import the SDK and upload a file. So to do that, we're going to do import and do pinata SDK. And we're going to do that from npm pinata. And this is generally if uh, you're using Dino, if you're just doing regular npm or TypeScript, you just do uh, npm install pinata. It's that easy. And once we have that, we can go ahead and create a new instance of the pinata SDK. So that's going to look like const pinata equals new Pinata SDK. And in here, we just have to pass in those two things that I showed you in the app earlier. So one is the Pinata JWT. So I'm going to pass that in from my environment variable here. And the other is Pinata Gateway. I'm going to be using a different gateway for my account. But you just put it in just like you saw it on the dashboard, where it's just the subdomain, then my Pinata.cloud. That easy. Once we have that, we can go ahead and start using the SDK. I'm going to make a just simple function called main. And in here, I'm going to do a couple things. First thing to do is just go ahead and make a file that we can upload. Of course, you know, this SDK is very flexible and you can access local files on a machine. You can 
access files that people select from their computer and want to upload through your application. There's loads of different ways you can access those files, but they all kind of revolve around the file object that's used in the you know, web APIs. Uh, so if you ever have any questions about how to set those particular up, just go to docs.pinata.cloud. We have various different guides on whether you want to use Next.js, Astro, Svelte, all sorts of different kits you can use to uh, set up uploads. Really simple. So we're going to do const file equals new file. And in here, we're just going to say hello world. If I could spell it. <laughs> All right, and then we'll just give it a name, say hello.txt and type uh, text slash plain. This is just a great little example file to use. And once we have our file, we can upload it just like this. We can do const upload equals await pinata.upload.file. And you can see here, we have actually lots of different upload methods. So if you want to do base64 string, raw JSON, or even upload from a URL, like a remote file, you can do that. So for this one, just going to do file. And then we're just going to go ahead and console.log the upload results. And let's just go ahead and run main. And let's go ahead and run this. And this is going to go ahead and install the SDK, run the code. And here we go. This is the result of our upload. So we have the ID of the file, the name, the CID, which is that unique special hash that we talked about earlier. Uh, it's going to have created at, text playing, et cetera. And I've already uploaded this file, so it's saying it is a duplicate, which is nice, which means that uh, if I keep uploading this file, it's not going to blow through my storage. It's just going to stick to that one file that I've already uploaded, which is really nice. Now, if we wanted to access this file, we could do that by creating a URL. So we can do const link or URL. We do await pinata.gateways.create sign URL. And the reason we're using this is because if you remember, all files by default are private. And so you have to create a URL that is temporarily accessible for people to use. And this is really applicable for the challenges we have, where if you wanted to unlock a file based on a credential, this is basically the step after you verify that who they are, you know, verifying who they are, you can use this to give them the link to access a file. Uh, and so in here, it's really easy. We're going to do CID, and this is going to be accessing that upload object we just got. So upload.cid. And we'll have expires. And this is basically a time limit of how long the uh, link is valid for. Uh, and it's done in seconds. So we could just do 60 seconds. And let's just go ahead and console all that link. Let's save and run. All right, so we have our same upload object that we did before, but now we have this link. So we can go ahead and click on this. And we can see here, we have the text that we uploaded earlier, just hello world. We have you know, our path here, and you can see here, we have this really long signature here. And normally if we would take that out, then it wouldn't be accessible because it's a private file. So that's a way you could just upload a private file and access it. But what if we wanted to make it a file that is publicly accessible? Well, we can do that by creating a group like we showed earlier. And so to do that, we'll just go up before we upload the file and we'll do const group equals await pinata.groups and create. And groups are basically just a really nice way to organize your files into kind of like buckets, but just a little bit different. They work differently and they're much simpler. They don't require all the configuration that like an S3 bucket would. All we have to do is just give it a name here and I'm going to do DIF demo. And in here, I'm also going to do is public. And so I'm going to set this group to be public. You can do public or private groups. And what this means is if I upload a file to this group, then it will be publicly accessible without having to do any signatures. So let's test that out. I'm going to change the file just a little bit to give us a new CID. So we'll do hello, BIF. And then I can go ahead and upload that file pretty easily by doing group and then just putting in the group ID. So group.id. Really simple. And there's loads of different ways you can chain methods on here, like update metadata and add different things to your uploads. It's really, really nice. And now we won't actually need this whole link here. Instead, we could just go ahead and do console.log. And I'm going to do our domain here of our gateway. And I'm going to just access that CID. So upload.cid. 
And so this will basically give us the link without that signature extension. And if everything works, then we should just be able to access the file without any kind of signatures because it's a public file. So let's go ahead and run it. Here we go. And so we have this link here. We just click on it. There we go. Hello, DIF. No signature required because it's a public file. Very, very nice. So we basically showed you how to use the files API, which is our public and private files. It's our new system that's all set up. But if you find yourself wanting to use the public IPFS network and do some things with distributed file systems, uh, it's really easy to do that. Uh, what we're going to do is just go up here and we're going to change the package. We're going to do pinata-web3. And this is going to give us access to the IPFS API. And the SDK is going to be almost identical. So what we can do here is we'll have our same file. So hello, DIF. We'll help change out this group here. And now we can go ahead and access this file through IPFS gateways. And so we'll do both our included gateway as well as a public gateway that is uh, controlled you know, by other people outside of us. It's a peer-to-peer -peer network. We're gonna change this back to hello world. And so we're gonna do const link equals await pinata.gateways. Uh, convert, and we're just going to do upload .ipfs hash. So it's just ever so slightly different. A log link, and we're going to do another one here, but instead do do link to, and instead of using the default gateway that's included with our config here, this dweb.mypinata, I'm going to put a different one. I'm going to do https ipfs.io, and that is the official IPFS public gateway. And so now we can go ahead and run this instead. And it looks very similar to our files API. We still have the CID and we can click on this to access the file on the IPFS network through our gateway, but we can also access it through the public network. And so this is the IPFS.io network, publicly available file, available peer to peer. Anybody could take the CID and download it through an IPFS node really cool stuff. And so all of that is still accessible if you want to do that using the Pinata Web3 package. That's basically it. And that's the end of our little demo here. So let's get back into our presentation. And so just a few other things in regarding to, you know, what else could we do with Pinata? What are some other things we could do? Uh, what is the thing that we can do is actually create uh, API keys and have limited scopes and use cases. So in the case that you may want to upload a file from a front end, uh, you don't want to use your admin API key and leak that and everybody gets access to it. Instead, you can generate a temporary API key that has limited uses. It could be just one use, it could be five uses. And that way you can also limit what endpoints they have access to. So if you only want them to be able to upload a file and maybe say not delete a file, you could do that. And it gives you a lot of interesting ways to use Pinata in different circumstances and scenarios. And so that's one thing you could do. Uh, another thing that you could do is something called hot swaps. And this is a slightly newer feature that we implemented. It essentially allows you to update the content for a CID while keeping the history of changes accessible. Uh, historically with IPFS and CIDs, when you upload a file, it's immutable, you can't change it because that file is based on the content of that CID. And so we kind of figured out an interesting and clever way to work around this and also provide um, you know, clarity and transparency as far as what content you're getting when you're visiting the URL is uh, you could basically, uh, using the API, create a new CID that is represented for one. So we had that CID for Hello World. Uh, if I wanted to, I could do a hot swap and update the content inside and the URL stays the same, but the content that's delivered is different. But there's still a publicly accessible API by any Pinata user to see the history of that CID and how it's been changed. So it's kind of like a very interesting way to do a versioned log of content when each version has its own content addressable hash, uh, which is really, really cool. There's a lot of cool stuff you can do about that. And we have some examples in our blog of things we've built using that. Another thing that we have is if you're interested more in the Web3 space and decentralized aspects, we also have support for EIP 712 signatures for files on the IPFS SDK. So what that means is you can have somebody with a you know, uh, Ethereum wallet, sign an EIP 712 signature and attach that to the file and have that signature accessible uh, in the header of the gateway, which is really, really cool. And you could do some really cool things with verifying 
content, you know, saying who it says it is. We have some blog posts on that as well, which you can check out. Really, really fun stuff. So that's just a few other things you could do with Pinata. And of course, we have lots of prizes for DIF, doing a whole big slew of things. And we'll go over briefly kind of each one. So at the very top, we have our $5,000 best overall. And this is basically going to be the best app display in a use case for Pinata. It could be the Files API or the IPFS API. We would just love to see, you know, something that really shows a purposeful use for Pinata. And number uh, for the $1,500 prize, we have a verifiable file storage, and that's basically accessing private files through a verifying a credential. This is something you definitely want to use the files API for because it has that private file aspect and basically want to see, you know, really creative ways of um, accessing files through verifying a credential. Pretty straightforward. We have a proof of personhood credentials as well, which is pretty simpler. And we would love to see an app that, um, you know, Pinata is basically used on the side to help assist in creating a PPP solution. So not necessarily a direct, you know, upload file. It's kind of like something that'd be on the side, storing some information about the personhood credential, something like that. Uh, so we have a challenge for that. Uh, we also have identity-based access controls for private files. Uh, this is similar to the verifiable file storage, um, but, you know, probably a little bit different because we want to look at something like an identity credential. Uh, example might be like an Ethereum address. And of course, we have a you know a final five honorable mentions. So if you don't get the first four prizes, you could still qualify for an honorable mention, which is a prize of thousand dollars or oh sorry hundred dollars. And we'll be doing five of those, uh, which is really nice. Now, as far as resources, we have a dedicated docs page for you guys. That's going to be at docs.pinata.cloud/dif. You go to that URL, it's going to have all the information that we talked about today, uh, whether it's starting up a Pinata project and getting the SDK installed, getting your account set up, uh, prize information, as well as tutorials and blog posts. All of that is going to be in that one spot there. Uh, but of course, we also have our full Pinata docs at docs.pinata.cloud. And of course, we are going to have our support channel in the DIF Discord, and you'll just see it there under Pinata. So if you have a question, you get stuck, feel free to mess with me there. I'm very active on Discord and I keep up with it. So if you post a question there, I will probably be there, uh, as well as my partner, Lindsay, who is a community manager and does a lot of support for Pinata, and she is awesome. So she will probably be there as well, helping us out. And that is basically it. So thank you guys so much for listening. I'm glad you guys were here. Uh, again, if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. If, if I think we have some time, so if you have any questions you want to ask, you know, here on video, we can do that. And of course, all of our information is there at our docs. Uh, so docs.pionacloud slash DIF. And I think I might have some questions here in the chat. So let me just read that. These cases, you know, there's a couple questions that have rest of my side. CRUD permissions file users. Yeah, so uh, permitting additional uh, CRUD permissions to files to other users, identities, and groups. It is possible. You'll probably have to build that up yourself a little bit. So like I said, we do have the ability to create scoped keys and things like that. But a lot of the authentication side, you'll probably have to handle on your own or with like another provider. Uh, I think we have several tutorials similar to that where like we use Superbase Auth or something like that to verify who someone is before they can upload a file. Something like that is, you know, probably what you're looking for. Um, and then it says, is it possible to read data of files API directly to other apps platforms, mainly visible to editable permission users? Uh, for example, do you have data for an app store in IPFS and render an app UI? Uh, yes and no. So if you want to prevent content from being seen from people that are not authorized, you're really going to need the files API, which is a private file system. Using IPFS is great for distributed apps, but everything is public. Uh, one solution around that is encrypting the content before uploading it to IPFS, but it's not necessarily true privacy. And that's kind of one of the reasons that we built the files API is to have a true private file solution versus just encrypting content and putting it on IPFS. Um, but yes, you know, we do have, you know, ways you could do that. And essentially, you know, we have everything but the auth mechanism. So you can essentially build the auth mechanism to verify someone and then either have access to upload the file or access to download the file and view the content. That makes sense. So hopefully I answered your question, Adam. Let me see. Got... Okay, we have an easy business. Cool. Awesome. Great. Yeah. Love to hear it. Uh, if you have any 
problems uh, setting that up, feel free to hit me up in the Discord. I'd be happy to chat with you, Adam. Cool. Any other questions, chat, or if you wanted to jump on video, I think that's fine too. Actually, one thing I was wondering, um, in contrast to the IPFS, if someone's interacting directly with the IPFS layer, is Pinata doing something around availability as well? It, in sense of, just so I understand um, the question. Well, like if you just go put something on the IPFS network, you can't necessarily be, in, you know, guaranteed that it's there. It has to be, you know, provided by someone in the network. Is is that something oh, gotcha. that? Is that something that Pinata is kind of doing as a, as a layer on top, basically? Yes, absolutely. Uh, so that's actually one of the big reasons Pinata exists, honestly, is because um, when you're putting content on IPFS yourself, you have kind of several different options. You can run your own IPFS node from your computer. Um, but when you do that, it's very unlikely that people are going to be able to access the content quickly or even be able to find it. And so pinning you know, IPFS pinning services like Pinata basically make it easier for you to not only upload the content to IPFS, but make it very available. And so we have like a very broad and advanced network of IPFS nodes and the ways that they distribute content. And so one of our biggest things is being able to make sure that if you upload to Pinata, it is accessible on IPFS no matter what. Um, so a great example of that and things I kind of love to play with. So I actually have an IPFS node running on my desk through my Raspberry Pi, have a tutorial on that if you're curious on how to do that. And what I can do is I can upload a file to Pinata, and then I can download that file directly from IPFS peer to peer through my Raspberry Pi without using any other Pinata technology or gateways or anything like that or SDKs. I can access it on a peer to peer level, which is really, really cool. So yes, one of the big things we do is if you're using IPFS, we do make it very accessible. Um, and that's why you definitely want to be careful and only post public content, because once it's on IPFS, it can be very tricky to get off. So <laughs> thank you. Good, great question. Yeah. Thank you, Kim. Uh, any other questions? I know we ended a little bit under time, but, you know, give people an opportunity if they have any other questions or comments. It seems very clear. It's a great API. I love the consistency. Awesome. Glad to hear that. Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> any um, inspiration from other, have you guys done other hackathons or have you done any in-house hackathons? Do you have any inspiration maybe you can share? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we've, you know, Pinata loves hackathons. We love supporting them and sponsoring them. Uh, we also love participating in them. Um, you know, so one hackathon that uh, my partner, Justin, which I think, you know, Kim and Lamari know, and then, uh, our other coworker, Marge, who's our designer. Uh, us three participated in ETH Global last year, and we worked on a project called Cosmic Cowboys. And that was an interesting project that used a combination of ERC-6551, which is, you know, accounts owned by NFTs, uh, as well as AI and IPFS and Pinata. And the concept was basically a blockchain game that had NPCs that were kind of autonomous. And so these NPCs, uh, were prompted to make a decision every, you know, minute or every hour. And we used a lot of AI to help them make decisions. And not only could they make decisions, but they had their own wallets and accounts to uh, transact on chain, which was, you know, really, really fun. Um, we've had lots of other really cool people that do, you know, really interesting stuff through our hackathons. I think if you go to our blog, we have a um, kind of like a, I'll have to see if I can find it, maybe post in our discord. Uh, but different, generally when we do hackathons and we have like a post debrief blog post, we kind of go over what people have built and some really interesting things that they've done. Um, and so, you know, we'll have that available for you guys too. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to think if there's any others like off the top of my head that other people have done that um, were really wild. I think the other one that we had, I had one last year and they essentially built a uh, augmented reality platform for brand advertisement and did some crazy stuff with having files on IPFS and NFTs and accessing those items, you know, kind of merging physical in person, but also, you know, digital space. Um, that one was really, really cool. So a whole lot of really interesting stuff we could do for sure. Awesome. Thank you. 
Uh, I'll leave it up to, I think that's probably all the questions you have. So, Lamar, I'm not sure if you want to go ahead and end the session or if you have anything else you want to say, but I think, I think we're probably all set. Yeah, I think we are. It doesn't look like anyone has any more questions. I did drop the Discord link to the Pinata ch channel. So if people want to go there and continue yeah. discussion, have any follow-up questions, feel free to. Um, but I want to say just thank you, everyone, for joining us. Um, and if you're listening to record the recording, um, yeah, if you have any questions, um, we'll also have the links available on the uh, info site. So thank you so much, everyone, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thanks so much, y'all. Have a good one. All right. Bye. Thanks, Steve.